Hello, welcome back to All American Arts Workshop. Today I'm going to do a video on my X Carve by Inventables. It is a CNC router, probably I would say the best for its price range. I definitely haven't had any problems with it yet, except for I broke this one little belt on here, which was like seven bucks to replace. Um, obviously, those are going to break with uh, wear and tear, especially how much I use it. Um, this thing's always running in my shop. It's like a whole new set of hands in my shop. Um, before, I, I bought it because I do a lot of wood flags and I used to engrave all my stars by hand. So I got this and it saves me at least 50 minutes on every flag. It used to take me about an hour to roto zip every star out. Now I just put it in here, it takes about 10 minutes. But I use it for everything. Um, I'm gonna, in this video, make a cribbage board just like this one. This is gonna be a back piece and it's gonna just pivot. And then I got the pin storage, the card storage, and of course my logo on the bottom piece. And then this is uh, all recessed in and then engraved logo there. So I'll show you real quick on the computer on how I set up my holes for the, the template for that and stuff. And if you want to see more in depth on the easel software, which comes free with the Inventables X Carve, I will do that. Just let me know in the comments if you want more of that. Um, like I said, it does come free with the CNC, but they do have a pro version as well. I don't know exactly how much that is for a year or monthly, but yeah, check that out. But I'll uh, take you over to my other workbench quick and I'll show you a few other things that I've done with it. And then we'll go from there. So here's a few things that I got in my house um, that I've done on the CNC. Usually I just make stuff to order so I don't have much sitting around. But like I said, um, the wood flags is the main reason I bought it. I uh, sell quite a few of them. I've probably made about 70 of them now. Um, and here's a Minnesota cutout. I do a lot of Minnesota cutouts. Obviously, I'm, I live in Minnesota. Um, I do a lot of hockey stick. So I got hockey sticks and stuff. And I cut it out as Minnesota. That's one, another one of my big sellers. But this one is a epoxy um, resin river table that I kind of cut up into the shape of Minnesota. And then I did a cherry inlay so I engraved that out and then I cut a thin piece of cherry and then cut out the skyline and inlaid that in there. Um, this is just a Minnesota home engraved. Also another piece of that table. Then of course a uh, router bit, CNC uh, bit storage. Um, the good thing about the Inventables X-Carve is they got a whole like community of woodworkers that share their projects and stuff so you just go on there like that one was just someone else made it and then they share it and you can cut it out yourself a few other cribbage boards i did just basic ones um, some coasters that i made and then i engraved the the holder so they just slide right in there And then for all my pens, I got this thing I bring to craft shows. And then I just uh, I just engraved the foam even on the, the CNC. It does uh, pretty much anything, um, even some metal, uh, aluminum, I would say. I wouldn't go into steel, of course, but thin aluminum you can engrave on it as well. I got the DeWalt 611 router in mine but they offer a few other choices. But yeah, I'll get right over to the easel software and show you how to do that. All right, so we're gonna open up our easel. You just do that by going online. Easel.inventables.com. So here's a bunch of stuff that I've engraved and cut out with mine, but we're going to start a new project here. I'll go over this really quick. 
kind of show you how I got my holes for the template and stuff. So this is going to be the outside of my board. I know I want that to be 11.3. Get that in position here. And then for that, we're going to want to cut on the outside. You got on path, outside, inside. Depending on what size bit, that's going to make it um, smaller or whatever if you cut on the path or on the inside. If you do the outside, your exact measurement will be that 11.3. And uh, you got the rotation and position here so you can position it all by measurements as well. But we'll start with our whole template. So with the cribbage board, most of the time you want your holes to be an eighth inch. That's what most of the pins are that you'll buy. So I want to be 0 0.131. If you go uh, the 0.125, it won't cut it. It's going to say it's too small because it's got to be a little bit bigger than your bit. But if you go that 0 0.131, your pins will still fit just fine. So you can lay out your holes. I'm just going to copy and then I'll just paste a few of them. We're going to do a four player board, so I'll just get four of them there. So you can take this and just um, say that one's the position is the point or 3.228. You just add a quarter inch or however much you want each hole to be away from each other. Or I'm not going to do all the math and stuff here, otherwise, that video will be too long. Just zoom in really far. These are inch by inch squares. So with you being zoomed in this far, you just line up I already went through and did all the math and stuff and got my holes perfect. But you can just eyeball them. Because with you being zoomed in this far, nobody will ever see that you're off a 64th of an inch or whatever it is. But get a roll of four going there. Right click, combine. Except for it selected that one too. We're going to undo that. I'm just going to delete this bigger circle for now. So combine them. So now it's all one. And then you can copy, paste. Do that, edit, paste. for some reason. So you want a groups of five, five by four for a four player. So there you go. And we'll just combine all that again. So now we got that group there and it's com we went and combined all of that. So you got the five by four. You want to do groups of five um, and then that's a four player board, so you got four across. And we'll get our other circle back here, our outside circle. Press the lock button here. 11.3. We want to cut on the outside. And 
I'm getting that in place there. Then you just take your uh, keep selecting that outside one too. Just take your group. And you just put it wherever you want it. You can also do this by the shape. Rotate it however many degrees and then the position so you can get it all exact. I already went all th through that and I'm not going to show you in this video all the math and stuff. But yeah, just do that. Edit, paste again. Oh. Suppose I got to copy it first. So edit, copy, edit, paste, take that, put it about a quarter inch away, and you just slowly work it around. Edit, paste. So I'm sure you guys get the picture with this. Just get your groups in there. Um, 121 holes you want. So uh, each each line of four will have 121. That's uh, what the normal cribbage board takes. And then you can also just import images, just like this, image trace. We'll go upload file, my device. So you can get any image right offline or if you got something that you've designed, just take that. They will go with the uh, both Bowser. So we'll upload that and the easel will trace it out. Import. Put that right in there. Get it to size. And if you want to engrave all that out, you just go to fill. And then however deep you want to go. I normally go like an eighth inch with a big engraving like that, otherwise it takes quite a bit. So now we'd have Bowser in the center of your cribbage board and then you just put your holes all the way around it. And then up here you can put the size of wood you got, what kind of wood it is, or metal, plastic. And then uh, obviously X is left to right, Y is front to back, and your thickness. So I would be doing 0.75. And then uh, cut settings, you got your feed rate, your plunge rate, depth per pass. So that's going to be how far it goes down each pass. And then you can do multiple size bits which is nice, they didn't added this not too long ago. Um, so say you wanna engrave that Bowser, you're gonna wanna do an eighth inch to get all this big stuff and then a sixteenth of an inch to get like his fingernails and all the very small detail. And then normally I would do like a, like a quarter inch uh, to do the outside circle. So I can turn it up pretty fast and uh, turn my feed rate up pretty fast and normally cut that circle out in not even five minutes. Bigger the bit, obviously the faster you can go. And then you can generate the preview here, which is nice. It kind of tells you how long it will take to cut all that out. So I'll show you that here quick. Sometimes it's a little slow if it's got a lot of detail but 
So like that, it's going to take 21 minutes with my eighth inch bit. And an hour and 29 minutes with my 16th inch bit. But you can adjust this uh, by pressing custom. And you can turn your feed rate up and your depth per pass up once you figure out your bits and how fast your router can go without um, being too fast, obviously. You don't want that because then you're going to start breaking bits and or burning your wood if you're going too slow. Or So you got to play around with it and get used to it a little bit. But uh, there's a lot of stuff on here on the Easel app. There's other other videos that I've watched that kind of go into easel a lot, lot more, but you got the inlay generator. So you just put your shape on there and it's going to do your inlay all perfect. So it's going to set it up where you got your engraving and then you got the piece that you'll cut out and set in there. It does all that for you. Box making app. You got a puzzle designer, all sorts of stuff. You can make make different gears and it's a really really nice app especially for free. So you got all that different tools and whole bunch of app library there but then you got all your basic shapes you can do text with the, the pro you get a lot more text this doesn't have that much maybe we'll try clicking on the pro and see yeah so you got quite a few in there then also with your bits here to do V, v carving you got to have easel pro but they do give you five days free a month and that's just fine with me i don't really use the v carving that much except for when i go to really small detail i got a uh, 30 second um inch bit that i like to get a lot of detail out and that's a v bit But that's a quick run rundown of the easel software. Um, if you got more questions or you want to see more about it, just let me know. But I, uh, I'll get right over to cutting my cribbage board that I already got laid out. And I'll take you back to the CNC and show you how to set that up. All right, so I got my piece of wood in here. Uh, I was going to say in the beginning of the video that your X-Carve does not come with this top plate. It uh, They charge extra for one, but it is a lot nicer than mine, obviously. It's got a little bit more hold downs and stuff. I just made this one. Saved me $100 um, by making it myself. I just used, used some uh, threaded inserts, screwed it into some MDF, cut it to size of the, the machine. And then I use just my Rockler hold down clamps. So I got the piece of wood in here, got it all measured and typed into the easel software the size of my board. And then over here is the X controller. So you got your emergency stop and that's also what tells the machine what to do, basically. So this is gonna be a little bit back and forth, but I'll uh, keep hopping in and out of my CNC and then to my screen recorder to show you my computer screen. So we'll hop back to the computer and I'll show you that quick and how to control the router and position it to your start point. Alright, so this is what I'm going to be cutting. 
Um, so I got my outside circle. Well, we'll go start at the wood here. So I got 11 and uh, three quarters wide, 18.3 length, and then my thickness of the oak is uh, 0.78. I'm just gonna leave it as plywood there. Um, so I got my outside circle. That's gonna be cutting at 0.76. So that's gonna go all the way through. All my holes are at a, just over a quarter inch deep. And then my engraving is just over an eighth inch deep. And then I'm gonna be using an eighth inch bit and a sixteenth inch detail bit. So we'll press carve here. And this is how you control your router or your position of your router. You got an inch, 0 0.1, 0 0.01. And you just click that and your router will move back and forth, up and down. And this is obviously the Z is up and down. So I'll go, uh, I'll jump it back to the CNC itself and you can kind of see me position it. So I'm gonna get this to where I want it. I got plenty of extra length, so I'm just going to start it by my clamp here. And we're going to throw the eighth inch bit in there. I buy most of my bits from Rockler. Um, some are actually Rockler's brand, and then some are the um, fruit or however you say it. I don't even know. So I got my eighth inch bit in there. Now we'll go back down with it. too far down so to dial it in a little bit more obviously you want to use your uh, point one and stuff there we'll just get it nice and close to the edge of the board because that will be the outside of my circle we don't want to waste that much and then right by my clamp so it always starts in the bottom left corner. It shows you on your um, the easel software where your scene or your start point is. So that's not really too critical, as, unless you got a, a piece of wood that's going to be really pushing it on the size. But then you want to just dial it in right to where you're touching the top of the wood. So I got that all set up and then I'll jump back to the computer and then show you how to start it. Alright so I got it all dialed in over there. You're just going to look at your material type and your thickness, confirm that, confirm material and it's secured down, materials secured, roughing pass, detailed pass, so you got to remember I got my eighth inch bit in right now, so I'm going to go to the roughing pass, continue, it's going to tell me what that is, I'm using a straight cut bit, confirm, confirm my home position, lower left corner, and to the surface of my material, and raise the bit so it automatically raises and then turn your sp spindle on
I'm gonna turn that on. Alright, so the eighth inch bit's all done. So now you just go into the carve again on the easel. Bring your router up. And without moving, moving the router at all, switch out your bit to your sixteenth inch. And dial her back in right to the touch in the surface. Go through the same settings on the computer, confirm the material thickness, and confirm bit, confirm home position. And then you just let that go to town and I'll be back to show you what it looks like when it's all done. Well guys, that's all there is to it. If your tools are sharp, you don't barely even got to sand it. Obviously just a little bit on the, the edges and stuff. It's end grain, but finished product. I will probably just fill it in with paint like the other one I showed you in the beginning. Um, Definitely check out the X car if you're looking for a CNC machine. Um, I also forgot to add that you can go two and a half inches with uh, deep, so you can put a two inch or a two and a half inch thick board on here. Um, I think that's the only thing I forgot to say about it. But uh, if I helped you out with anything, make sure you uh, like and subscribe. Definitely appreciate everyone that subscribes and if you want to see anything more in detail, I won't know unless you comment so don't, uh, don't be afraid to comment and tell me if you want me to go over something a little bit more. I will definitely try to help you out or if I have to, I'll even walk you through it individually. So thanks again, until next time, have a good one.